Hi, I'm Dr. Tash. In today's episode, I'll be talking about the hormone DHEA, dehydroepiandrosterone. DHEA is mainly made by the adrenal glands, which sit on top of each of your kidneys. DHEA is also made in smaller amounts by the ovary, the brain, and skin. DHEA is also the most abundant steroid made in the human body. Really important for the production of other hormones like testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, and corticosteroids. After the age of about ooh, our mid-20s, its production starts to decline. In reproductive medicine, we use DHEA quite a lot. It's used as a form of androgen replacement. In some, but not all studies, women who are over the age of 40 may benefit from having DHEA as a supplement as part of an IVF cycle. It may help these women respond to the ovarian stimulation and may improve pregnancy rates. DHEA has also been promoted to reverse the effects of aging. And studies in lab animals have shown that DHEA prolongs life expectancy. It is also used by athletes as a performance booster substitute for anabolic steroids. DHEA increases the sense of well-being, gives you more energy, supports the immune system, it helps the body repair itself and maintain tissues, it produces spikes in blood sugar and reduces insulin resistance, increases lean body mass, promotes weight loss, increases bone growth, it decreases cholesterol and lowers triglycerides, prevents blood clots, it decreases formation of fatty acid deposits and enables better sleep. So why may DHEA be low? The most common reason I see in my clinic is stress, chronic daily stress. And most people tend to have quite a lot of chronic daily stress from running to work, picking up the kids, dropping off the kids, making it to this class and that class. So it's, it's stress. Stress is the most common reason why DHEA is low. Now, what are the things that you can do to increase your levels of DHEA? Something simple like listening to music or practicing uh, relaxation techniques to de-stress. And there have been studies to prove this. Other things that can reduce DHEA include the menopause, aging and smoking. Symptoms of decreased DHEA include feeling burnt out, fatigued, feeling tired yet at the same time wired, having a decreased sex drive, decreased sexual sensation, decrease in stamina, feeling depressed in mood, having dry skin and hair, suffering from pains in your joints and muscles, and experiencing salt cravings. So where do you get DHEA from? Well, that really depends on where you live. So in Australia, you need a prescription. But in places like the United States of America, you can easily buy DHEA over the counter. So I picked up this brand of DHEA recently in the United States, very easy to get. The issue with getting things over the counter is that you're not really sure of the potency and the purity of the product. Never take any hormone like DHEA without the supervision of a doctor. Safe doses of DHEA vary from 25 milligrams to up to 150 milligrams a day. Main issues with taking high levels of DHEA or doses over time is that it can affect your liver. So your doctor will probably check your liver function test. At present in Australia, doctors can only obtain DHEA through a compounding pharmacy. I obtained mine through my compounding pharmacy friends at Compounded. Freddie and David. They provide my patients with quality products. Symptoms of too much DHEA include acne, pimples, having oily skin and scalp, getting anxious and nervous, an increase in hair loss, irritability, weight gain around the waist, deepening of the voice. But don't worry, I've not seen anyone turn into a man. Overall, I found that doses of 25 milligrams three times a day are generally quite well tolerated. Thank you for watching this episode of Dr. Tash TV on DHEA. I hope you've learned something today. If you have, please share it, share it with the world. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any future goodies. And until the next episode, be well.